I feel like I was at the um, Emmy Awards and my time was out. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs> good morning, church. <laughs> Uh, and good morning to those who are watching, and we're sorry that you're not able to be here with us because, uh, you know, we, we do a, a few announcements before we come on the air, and there's sometimes some fun and, and laughter and sometimes some, um, just some cool things that happen within when you have a group of people together who are great, um, loving people. And so we invite you to Grace every Sunday at 9 a.m. and would love to see you here when you are able, but completely understand when you're not. There's nothing like being in the fellowship of other Christians and other people who love the Lord on Sunday morning. Um, we will be having a back to church campaign. The Ministerial Association is, is gathering together to do this. And um, it will be, we're gonna have two parts to this. On Friday, on Good Friday, we are going to have a um, drive through Stations of the Cross and include different churches in St. Mary's. And so there are 14 Stations of the Cross. We hope to get 14 churches or 14 locations. Um, that's yet to be seen. And um, each person, it's going to start at 6 p.m. and you will drive from one station to another. And, um, but we will also have our Good Friday service at Walnut Grove at 7 p.m. I may change that to 7.30 if there are all 14 stations of the cross so that you have time to do that and then still come out. Plus we like, I don't mind it being a little bit darker for Good Friday service. So um, I, I'm going to actually say that's probably going to be 7.30 on Good Friday, but yet I don't want you to, to um, have lag time in between too. So 7 or 7.30, and I will let you know as time goes on. Um, also then on uh, Easter Sunday, the Ministerial Association is putting together a sunrise service out at the lake. It will be at the, on the East Bank, the second shelter house, I believe, and it will be drive up. So you will stay in your cars. We're working on getting it either on your car radio or, uh, I don't know, they talked some tech things that I wasn't real sure what they were talking about. And so I just shake my head yes a lot and say, I'll be there. And so I hope that you will all prayfully consider that as well. Um, oh, at the Stations of the Cross for each church, we do want live scenes. So that means that it will have to be more than me and Joe who are involved. And so I ask you to <laughs> just step up. <laughs> I'm not sure what station we have. I don't know how many people. I don't know, but there's you know, going to be people who put it together and people who will stand there um, or sit there or hang there, whoever you are for that night. <laughs> and so um, we, need, we need people. Um, and stay tuned for a promotion video that the pastors will be putting together. That's all I have for announcements. Um, our February tithe will go to the Family Life Center here in St. Mary's. We're excited about that, and we have given to them in the past, but um, we have a, a video for so you can see what goes on there and how our tithe is used for the good of um, God's glory. Hi, and welcome to the Family Life Center, St. Mary's location. My name is Allison. I'm the new director here. And as you just heard from Melissa, we have a lot of amazing things to offer children and families and moms and grandparents in the Alglaze County area. At both locations, we provide a free pregnancy test we provide um, STD testing, and we also provide ultrasounds. So just like a regular doctor's office, you come in, you could say you, say you think you're pregnant, and um, we'll do a quick pregnancy test, and then we'll schedule your ultrasound with a local doctor. So if you know anybody who's pregnant, maybe new to the area, doesn't have a doctor, or um, is experiencing an unplanned pregnancy, go ahead and send them our way. We are at 104 West Spring Street, right across from the movie theater. And we also provide diapers as well. 
at a third of the price, our diapers are a third of the price of um, over-the-counter diapers. And that's open to anybody. You do not have to meet income standards to come and shop for the diapers and the clothes and anything like that. And now we um, prepare our hearts for worship, and we do that by listening to music and um, mainly just being in the presence of God as we blot out what happened last week and what's about to happen next week, and we think and we um, focus on our Savior. Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for meeting us in this place and we are ready for the Holy Spirit to move us. We are ready to hear your message and we are ready to hear your words and we are ready to sit in your presence and hear from you. But Father, we first wanna worship you and honor you and love on you. We wanna raise our voices to sing your praises and Father, we pray that you find great joy in this as we come together and give you thanks. Amen. Let's stand as we enter into our time of praise and worship, and let's sing, He is Exalted. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever. Exalted, I will praise His name. He is the Lord, forever His truth shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in His holy name. He is exalted, the King is exalted. Yeah, 
sing it one more time. Turn your eyes. And the children can come forward. Oh, there you are. I was waiting for you out there. <laughs> you tricked me. I didn't even see you sitting there. Goodness. I kept thinking, well, the song, we must have another song because I don't see the Deringer girl standing out there. So, anyways, good morning. Did anybody get anything special today? No. Bo, what'd you get? Vicky, you got a pencil from Vicky for Valentine's Day. What'd you get, Bo? Love. Love? Is that what you said, oh, Bo? Bo, you just melt our heart hearts. Love. Does he get that from his dad or what? I said I didn't give it to him. Must be the Oh, that was very sweet, Bo. Really, it was. Love. And that's, you know, that, that's what today's all about is love, although that's not what the, the children's chat's about. But, uh, <laughs> so, do you guys get Valentine's? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, so you're, uh, you're in eager expectation. You think you'll get something? Hmm? I got my Valentine last night. Five pieces of... They got theirs last night, too? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. Your grandpa was very sweet last night. <gasps> Dad forgot to get Mom something. Did Mom get Dad something? No. See, I know. But it's still the men. <clears throat> Joe went to the grocery store, and I said, hey, um, can you pick yourself up a card? <laughs> Find a pretty one for you. <laughs> so I read it, and then I put it back. <laughs> I, so he came home. I said, but I didn't get you anything. He said, yes, you did, that card. <laughs> so anyways, so I wanted to talk today um, um, about what we're going to talk about in our scripture. And it's, um, have, you ever, have you ever looked at the sun longer than you should, like directly at the sun longer than you should have? And what do you see afterwards? 
like this brightness going, ugh. Have a light bulb, the same thing when you look at it. Joe has a habit of shining flashlights in people's eyes. And I say, don't do that. That is not, you do that all the, <laughs> you do that. And he'll go, look at this, and shine it in their eyes. And, that, and then it's like, it's so brilliant and so bright that you can't, you can't see anything else. You see that light for a while. Or have you ever been in bed in the, in, towards morning, it's still dark, and your parents turn on the light, and you can't hardly. Well, have you ever heard of the word transfiguration? Transfiguration, that's okay. It is in the Bible. It is, um, we're going to talk about it. It's in all three of the, it's in the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and John. We're going to talk about it from Mark, um, in the book of Mark, and it's the transfiguration. And Jesus transfigured. He went in his body, um, transfigured. And what that meant was he became so brilliantly white. His clothing was dazzling white, was gleaming white. And he was brilliant, and that just drew everyone's attention to him. Transfiguration, and that's when Jesus transformed um, for a moment. And who, he was on a mountain, and he had three disciples with him. He had Peter, James, and John with him, and they saw him. And on top of that, they saw with him Elijah, Elijah and Moses who had died years before, and they were on this. It's, can you imagine, like, first of all, you're with Jesus. Jesus was, you know, a fully human and fully God at that time, so they had been walking with Jesus. And then all of a sudden, Jesus, be, like, transfigures into this beautiful, brilliant, white light. And then there's Moses and Elijah. Boy, the disciples had a lot to take in, didn't they? No wonder they were, they were confused sometimes. That was just a lot. Now we have the Bible that we can go back and read it and we know what happened. But you know that in Revelation, we are told that when, when we have the new heaven and a new earth, there will not be a sun, S-U-N, because the sun, S-O-N, will be so brilliant, we don't need the sun. That's how bright he is. All right, let's, transfiguration, okay? So now you've heard that word, it's transfiguration. It's, it's um, turning into something um, brilliant or um, spiritual, something that is, is beyond what we can comprehend. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we know you are bright and brilliant and everything we need. We thank you for loving us. Amen. We have several prayer requests. Um, I want to do something just a little bit different this morning. I'm going to kind of assign these prayer requests. Um, we're going to go according to your birth date. And so um, we want you to pray for everyone, but we know sometimes um, we need a focus is good. Okay, so we're going to try this and see what happens because it's hard to remember everybody and sometimes remembering one and everybody focusing on someone is a nice prayer warrior situation. So the first one is um, Rhonda Shelby's sister Janet. She has horrible migraines. So those of you whose birthdays are in January, you will be praying for Rhonda Shelby's sister Janet. 
The second one is for Tony Beener. Um, she asked for prayers for her new neighbors, for her new home, prayers to serve God, and she also sends blessings upon Grace Church and all who enter. So those of you whose birthday is in February, you will be praying for Tony Beener and for her request. Vicki asked for prayers for her coworker, Rachel. She has, she's having tests run on a lump that was found on her breast. So those of you whose birthday is in March will be paying, praying for Rachel. Sharon's cousin Pam is still on a ventilator. Her friend Tom has a hard time with cancer. Those of you whose birthday is in April, please keep Pam and Tom in your prayers. Linda's brother, Linda Metzger's brother-in-law, Sam, was admitted to the hospital on Friday. He's having breathing problems um, and low oxygen. So those of you whose birthday is in May, you'll be praying for, Sam, praying for Sam. Linda McMurray asked for prayers for her grandson, Austin, who is sick, being tested for COVID, and also for her son, Scott, who is continuing to have tests. Scott and Austin, Austin will be the focus of your prayers, um, intercessory prayers, if your birthday is in June. That goes for you who are watching, too. Please join us in this uh, prayer request. Becky Leibarger asked to, um, for prayer. It's very difficult for her to take in her physical limitations. And those of you who know her know how difficult that is for her when she, especially um, during the supper, when she's so passionate about it and believes in it so wholeheartedly. Um, so please pray for Becky, if your birthday, well, all of you, and also specifically if your birthday is in July. Jody Wright, ongoing health issues and is in Columbus. Um, if your birthday is in August, Jody Wright will be your focus. For those who are homebound due to COVID, if your birthday is in September, you have some work to do. <laughs> Pray for those who are homebound who um, are not able to get out or not able to see others. Wynette's friend um, who has poly um, polymyalgia, she asked for prayers for her friend. So please, those of you whose birthday is October, focus on Wynette's friend who has polymyalgia. Sue's sister, Sue Roby's sister, has a procedure on Friday. And um, if your birthday is in November, you will focus on Sue's sister. Pastor Tim Smith just found out that he has to continue chemo. He had been done, had his scan, and it had the chemo had first done what it was supposed to. The tumor had shrunk, and now it stopped shrinking. And so he's continuing with his chemo. And I know those of you who have gone through it know that hearing that news, you know, you think you're done, and then, oh, you get to start over again. So. Um, please keep Pastor Tim Smith in your prayer. And for those of you whose birthday is in December, we ask you to, um, to focus on Tim, Pastor Tim. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh God, we do turn our eyes upon you. And forgive us, Lord, when we don't. Forgive us when we try to handle things on our own and try to, and try to do life without you. Not knowingly or not, not because we want to, but because we just think that we can handle what's in our way. And then, Father, we are brought back to reality that this life is tougher than what we are able to handle at times and we need you every day all day we need you to focus us and center us and keep us on the right path we need you to help us love others and especially those who at times appear to be unlovable and father sometimes that's us we are the unlovable ones we thank you that you have put it in someone's heart to love us anyways. Father, we are thankful that you have given us your son, Jesus Christ. 
that he chose to go to the cross on our behalf, save us from our sin, and we can stand righteous before you, that we can be in your presence because we have the ultimate intercessor, Jesus Christ. Father, you heard the prayers of your congregation this morning, and Father, it doesn't matter what month you were born. <laughs> you will pray and keep right in the middle of every situation that was brought up this morning that you are already there working on their behalf, working in the healing, working in the, the, um, in the situation that they are going through, in the emotional dilemmas and the emotional disturbances that we face, in the physical healing that is done. We know that you are in each situation. And Father, just for the record, we know that you weren't born. We know that you have always been. And we also know without a doubt that you will always be. And you have made it so that we confess Jesus as our Savior. We give our life to him. We commit to him and you will forever be our Father and we will forever be your children. Father, we pray for our nation. We pray for COVID to go away. We pray for our political outbursts to stop and for us to work as one in whatever form that takes and all for your greater good that we remember you are still on the throne and you are still in charge. May we remind ourselves and remind those around us that this is still true and always will be. Father, we pray for people who are making decisions. We pray for our town officials and our state and national and, and, and world leaders. Not an easy position to be in on good days, but it's been a while since we've had those. And so this is an even more trying time. We pray for wisdom and guidance from you, Lord. We pray for protection over our law enforcement, for those early responders, those who arrive first on the scene, those who roar, run towards what we run away from. We lift them up to you for your protection. Father, as we hinge on the, on the beginning of Lent, as we are waiting to move into Lent, we pray that your words transform us. That as we read your scripture, as we read your holy word, that we are transformed to become more and more like Jesus every day. Help us to be the church you've called us to be, inside and outside. And give us boldness to share the gospel with everyone we need, meet. And we pray all of this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes out of the book of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9, and it's simply entitled, The Transfiguration. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them, and there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud, 
This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Father, we call upon the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and guidance in understanding your message this morning and then to apply it to our lives as we see how the disciples applied it to theirs. Amen. Significant events tend to give us a chronology <clears throat> or an order to our lives. And for instance, I remember the very... I remember the last time that the Cincinnati Bengals played in the Super Bowl. I remember the year, and I remember the date. It was January 22, 1989. On January 20th, 1989, I gave birth to my second daughter. <laughs> we were still in the hospital on Sunday, and my husband and I were debating on whether we would, um, we would be home for the game or we'd still be in the hospital. And I had had her on Friday night at 7.16 p.m. You had to stay in the hospital 48 hours because there was a test the baby had to have done from the pediatrician. And so they made you stay in 48 hours. We decided that would be probably too late for me to go home. So we would be watching the Super Bowl in my room with the nurse taking care of my newborn and my mother-in-law taking care of my three-year-old and somebody was going to bring us our meals. And as it turned out, our pediatrician was also a Bengals fan. <laughs> and he came bright and early in the morning and he said, let's get this done and over with, get you home because we have a game to watch. And we were sent home about 11 o'clock that morning and then had to come back on Tuesday for that 48-hour test in January. Not one of the smartest things that um, may have happened, but hey, all for the good of the game. And it's funny that I remember all of that, but as I was reminiscing about that, I couldn't remember the outcome of the game. I didn't remember. Does anybody remember if we won or lost? Does anybody even, no one ever, I know, no one cares. What, Linda? <laughs> You're right. You're right, but listen to this. Do you remember who they played? Anybody remember? How'd you know? I remember things like that. Yeah, you do. We ask him all the time about his kids when they were little. Did they do this? Or did they? <gasps> but he can tell you the 49ers. Who won, Joe? The 49ers. The 49ers. What was the score? I don't know. Okay. Who was the quarterback for the 49ers? Steve Young. Who? Steve Young. Uh-uh. Joe Montana. Joe Montana. Yep. Yeah, Joe, Man Joe Montana, and he led them to um, a last-minute 20-16 to 16 victory. So we were in it for a long time, apparently, according to this. But it's funny how you remember one thing because of something else that happened in your life. I mean, some of you may say, well, um, I know I got my new car after I was married, right after I was married, so I, my, my car must be, my, my first Impala must have been in 1979 because that's the year I got married. Or some of you may, it may be the reverse. I got my Impala in 1979, so evidently that was the year that I got married. <laughs> it's not unusual to gauge or remember an event in accordance with another event. So when I see scripture start out after six days, I want to know six days after what. I want to know what was so significant that they stated after six days, this is what happened. As we look backward in scripture, we see six days ago was loaded for Jesus and his disciples. This was six days after Jesus and his disciples traveled from Beth Bethsaida to Caesarea Philippi, where on the journey he asked his disciples, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. And then Jesus asked the most important question of all, who do you say I am? 
Remember Peter's reply? You are the Christ. This was six days after Jesus told them they would have, he would have to suffer many things. He would be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the teachers of the law. He would be killed and then rise again three days later. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. And then right after that, Jesus took Peter aside and rebuked him and said, Get behind me, Satan. These words are true. This was six days after Jesus announced, if anyone would come after me, he must, den- take up, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. This was six days after Jesus asked, what good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet lose his soul. We should note that once it was spoken, spoken aloud exactly who Jesus is, teaching his teaching to the disciples ramped up. It's like Jesus said, great, now you know who I am. Now we can get down to business. Now I can, now I can tell you what's going to happen. Now I can bring you into the fold. And it's like that for us. Once we understand you are my savior, you are everything you, we need, you are, you are my life, then things start ramping up. When we know of Jesus or we know him from a distance, life kind of stays on a, that path. But as soon as we acknowledge who Jesus Christ is, as soon as we acknowledge the Son of God, the Messiah, our Savior, then our journey starts moving forward. So here we are six days later, and Jesus led Peter, James, and John up the mountain, a high mountain, either Mount um, Tabor or Mount Herman, depending on who you ask. And on this mountain, Jesus was transfigured. He was given a new, exalted appearance. Everything on him was radiant. His clothing was dazzling white. And there with Jesus stood Moses and Elijah. Moses, the man who stood atop another mountain with God as the law was written. Elijah, the great and obedient prophet who hung out with God on that same mountain that Moses was on, where he heard from God, not in the rush of the wind, not in the earthquake, not in the fire, but in a gentle whisper. And here they stand, Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Peter, James, and John were frightened. Peter, our dear Peter, not one to withstand pregnant pauses, not one to keep silent no matter what what emotion he's feeling, no matter what's going on around him. Peter, who always has something to say, blurts out, how about we build you some houses? Peter may have been afraid, but he had to have been excited, too. Here was Moses. Here was Elijah. And a cloud appears and envelops them. And we know from Old Scripture, Old Testament Scripture, that God is in the clouds. His voice came down. This is my son whom I love. Oh no, Peter, you're not taking over this conversation. (laughs) This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Can you even imagine being Peter 
James and John at that moment. Can you imagine? How could they possibly understand all that was happening? First, they find themselves in the company of two men who had died years and years, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Then the voice of God speaks directly to them. Listen to my son. And as they're taking all of this in, suddenly Jesus is the only one staying there with them. Moses, Elijah, the voice of God, the cloud are all gone. And Jesus says, don't tell anybody what just happened. The most exciting thing just transpired in front of you, but don't tell anybody. Do you know how hard that must have been for Peter? <laughs> or perhaps they were like, don't tell anybody. How can I tell anybody? We have no idea what just happened. How would we even make sense of that? How would it even come out in, in, in intelligent words? And Jesus said, don't tell anyone until I have risen from the dead then it will make sense. There is a time and there is a place, but it's not now. We now know what Peter, James, and John did not know at that moment. We now know that what happened was Christ's divine nature had just been revealed. What Peter had said, you are the Christ, was now showing to be reality. God's voice exalted Jesus above Moses and Elijah as the long await Messiah with full divine authority. Their appearance presented Jesus as the fulfillment of the Old Testament law that came through Moses and the prophetic promises. All of those promises from the, the, the major and minor prophets was represented in Elijah. And God, Jesus was the fulfillment of those promises. Jesus was not merely one of the many prophets. Jesus is the Christ, the Savior, the Messiah. That day... After six days, Peter, James, and John had been given a glimpse of the splendor to come after the cross. And boy, would they need it as they witnessed everything that was about to come. Let's pray. God, you show us many ways, many ways that Jesus is the Messiah. Your word leaves no doubt of who he is and why he came. Father, may we not doubt, but have full trust and belief in Jesus as our Savior. Amen. Amen. Scripture next week is Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 through 17, and then, of course, the reminder that this Wednesday will be our Ash Wednesday service here at Grace. Bev talked about the amazing love. We're going to sing about the amazing love. So stand as we close, and let's just think about the words of these, this song as we, as we sing. Let's stand. You were forsaken, I'm accepted, you were condemned, I'm alive and well, the spirit is within me, because you died and rose again, 
I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Spirit is within me because you died and rose. Amazing love. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. Amazing love, amazing love, how can it be that you might king for dying? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. As you go out into this crazy, wild, fun, exciting, scary world, receive this blessing. May the Lord your God be with you, remind you of his love, bring you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.